Hey everyone, I'm Ben from the Bonehead Podcast and today I'm going to be reviewing the new Lizardman team from Games Workshop and the pitch and the spike magazine and the dice. Let's have a look. So first thing we'll start off with is the pitch. Now, we had difficulty getting hold of this pitch. We ordered three in our, um, in our order from an online shop and they did call me while I was away on holiday and said they could only, they, they actually said they weren't sure if they could send any at all. We did have one arrive, so I just wanted to say thank you to Rick and Craig for letting me use the one copy that we got delivered um, for this review. Also, I just wanted to have a shout out to Ben Davey, um, a player who lives honestly about 30 miles away. And I was like, look, if you need to borrow a pitch for the review, then please, you know, come and get it, which that was really kind. So thank you very much, Ben. Luckily, I managed to get one that was uh, well, delivered to my house. So let's have a look. When it comes to pitches, we'll have a look at the pitch itself in a second, but the rules. So let's see if we can get a good shot of this. So uh, got a bit of fluff there, which is cool. Ultimately, if you play on the good quality side of the pitch, you end up, well, that's this one here, so the, the, the old pitch. It's Astro Granite, and it gives you plus one modifiers to armor rolls. So if someone gets knocked down, it's plus one to the armor roll. Can be brutal. The second part is if uh, one or more touchdowns were scored during the first half, which when you're playing with Lizardman is pretty likely. Basically, lava fills the stadium up, and the pitch ends up as sweltering heat. At the start of the second half, do not roll on the kickoff table. Instead, treat the result as having been seven, changing weather. So that's quite useful. So if you go into the second half, you know you're not going to get a blitz or anything, but you will have sweltering heat for the rest of the match. You still roll on the kickoff table for other kickoffs, but for that first one, you automatically get sweltering heat, which can be brutal. So let's have a quick look at the pitch itself. I'm not going to be able to get the whole thing in the shot, but you know what? we can have a look at a couple of parts of it. So look at the detail on that. It's a really, really lovely pitch. I'm not surprised that this has sold out or you know, that they've struggled to fulfill all the pre-orders. Um, it is really, really nice. I'll get a shot and put it on the video now. Of the whole thing laid out. But as you can see, it's good quality, standard quality, and there's your sweltering heat coming from the ground. You've got the classic blood bowl, blood spillages everywhere, and there is a goblin on here somewhere, which I think is ultimately the most important thing. And there it is, the Where's Wally of Blood Bowl. Pitch is lovely. Got some dugouts. Um, this is the normal side, so the dormant side. I love that this is kind of like pool and you've got an endless pit there for the three different zones. I did say on the preview last podcast episode, it looked a bit like a Mexican restaurant with the text and I can kind of see it, but it's not <laughs> its not quite so prominent. Um, oh wait, no, yeah it is, there we go. So breeding pool, endless pit. This is the lava side, so the, the fiery side. I like these pitches. I think both sides are pretty clear but I would say that the uh, the lava side was the easiest to use, probably up there with the dwarf one. The other thing that everyone's been raging about are the dice. So I think they created more dice because we didn't have any problems, but they are a beautiful blue color. I realize that the lighting on this makes it very bright. Look at that, a bit of shine. It's almost like a Star Trek movie, but they are absolutely lovely dice. Really like these ones and um, Oh, that's such a good little logo there. So for the meat, we've got the team itself. So the Guacamole Crater Gators, 12 models, you get six Saurus, Sauri, Sauruses, four normal skinks and two chameleon skinks, which are quite cool. There's only one paint scheme out there. There's only one paint scheme in the Spike magazine as well. So you know, but there are there are lizard men in Age of Sigmar, and of course Warhammer, the fantasy battle had lizard men. So there's plenty of different schemes out there. The balls are cool. So we got the little lizard hatching and the little empty one there. 
or cracked one, which is quite cool. The tokens are amazing. The, the slan guy is awesome and the little coins are so cool. It's almost a shame you get the full team in this because two sets so you can have all the three tokens would be really, really cool. Um, but you only need two chameleon skinks on a team and six sources on a team. So assuming you're not running any more than four skinks, you're good to go with the exception of the Croxigore. Let's have a look at the models. So here is one of the sprues. I've built some of the models of the other sprue. Hopefully you can see some of the detail, but they are really, really nice models. I'm really impressed with this team. At first, I think because of the paint job, they look a bit too reptilian or a little bit like they belong in a Halo game, but they do not look like that when they're built. I haven't painted mine yet, but as you can see, because I've not built them, but I've been really impressed with the models. They're not too difficult to put together and the quality of them is really good. As for variability, you only have some hats to put on skinks and with the helmets you can cut off the brace face. So let's have a look at some of them built. So here's one of the Saurus models now. They're a good size, probably a bit bigger than I was expecting. They do have that brace face, that brace guard, which is it's interesting. So within our local group, half the guys are saying, yep, yeah, cool, it gets that American football aspect, which is a really good point. I'm not so sure on whether I like it or not. I will probably clip some off just to make them look a bit variable. This model is one of the ones I reckon you can play with the arms to give a bit of a different pose, but really nice. I've got a second one here that I've built up. Um, I'll show a time lapse in a minute down in the corner. Just saying, because they're quite simple to build. I was really pleased with this. I built the Nurgle team on holiday and that was actually quite straightforward. These guys are just, just as straightforward as that. So you're not looking at elf level. There's some small pieces, but then they fit together really well. So actually this is a brilliantly designed kit. Huge tails. So there is a possibility that you will have difficulty lining up, but not the end of the world. And we've got a skink. So I haven't put the helmet on this guy. I haven't put his hat on, but it does just glue on top of the head. So you do have a bit of flexibility with how your team looks. That's the skink and of course, we also have the Chameleon Skink, who is about the same size, which is really good. The bodies won't intertwine because it is the new Blood Bowl kits, so they are very fixed. But this guy, you've got a special little frill for his neck. You've got this as well. And these arms, as you can see, because I think I've slightly built his one wrong there, you do have a bit of posability with these, which is quite cool. As for a size guide, you can see Skinks 2, Strength 2, and the Saurus Strength definitely. The kit also comes with some transfers um, which is very standard now you get the black ones you get the white ones you get some cool logos there um, let, me, let me put it the right way around not that there is one but yeah some cool designs be quite useful so now we have the spike magazine so we will cover the inducements and star players and things like that on episode 27 of the podcast, which we're going to be recording tomorrow. We're going to have Lewis um, on again, good guy Lewis, who's helped us out a couple of times. He was on the Undead episode, uh, despite having never won a game with Undead. However, he has won an entire league with the Lizardmen and has built a very, very good team. So he's the right guy to talk through our star players when you'd use them, build guides and things like that. So what we'll do now is we'll just have a quick look at the magazine itself to see what it's all about. So lovely cover. You've got the classic glossy spike logo there from Games Workshop, really impressive. Again, the one different paint scheme. I've got a cool intro. So the whole theme of this is that the spike team are on holiday, which is cool. You get a breakdown of the positionals, what they do, where they are, some famous Lizardman team, which is always nice to see. Background is quite important in Blood Bowl. We have got the roster. So. Your skinks are the same. Comedian skinks are brand new. So 0 to 2, 70,000 each. Movement 7, Strength 2, Edge 3, Armor 7, Dodge, Pass Block, Shadowing and Stunty. So they're regular, regular skink, but for 10,000 you get Pass Block and Shadowing. Not game breaking, but could be interesting, or at least just to add something a little bit different to the team. You got your 6 Saurus, your 1 Croxagore, and 60k for rerolls. The interesting thing, which I'm sure you've all heard by now, is that there are only six star players in this magazine, unlike the 10 or, you know, 9, 10 or 11 that we've seen in the other ones. 
they are some new ones as well. So Slibley's gone and it's, it's quite interesting. We've got Zolkath the Zote in here. So there's really only three new star players in this magazine. Anki Panky, Droll and Dribble and Glottal Stop. We'll cover those in episode 27 of the podcast. Got a team spotlight from the Guacamole Crater Gators. They've done a good job with... Um, <laughs> there's your team of legend. Uh, quite an interesting build there. 11 fan factor. So 2 million team. Might be worth a game. Anki Panky, we've got a star player spotlight. Quick shot of his rules. So he's a temple guard, 210. So he's a big Saurus basically. Movement 7, so fast, strength 4, edge 1, armor 9, normal Saurus. Block, grab, loner, stand firm. So he's basically replaced Slibly. 210 for a block star player, quite useful. We've got career highlights for the team. And what else have we got? Got some cool rules for Lustrian leagues. So you've got... Uh, <laughs> you've got its own little season. So we saw the stunty season, I think, in the Halfling one. And this one here, the Croxodon Cup, is a very similar thing. Um, so, but you get team mascots as well, which is quite cool. Might be worth looking at that and rolling that in a normal season. So the cool rules in this one, we've got a bunch more tables. So we've got uh, rainforest weather and a kickoff table there. That is different. So let's have a look at some of these. So praise the sun gods. Uh, basically is a go for it roll. If you fail, a go for it and knock down, add one to the armor roll. Additionally, apply all the heat wave conditions as well. So heat wave is the next one. Players attempting go for it will fail on a one to two. So apply a minus one modifier to all dice rolls when rolling to see if KO'd players recover. So this league is brutal. So if you use these rules and that pitch, you're adding plus two to the armor roll and you're failing go for it's on one and twos. Absolutely crazy. Plus, if you hit a hate heat wave, you're minus one to, for your um, KO'd players to come back. So plus two to the armor roll, and you're coming back from a KO on a five plus. It, it, you might as well play sevens. You're going to end up with no players on the pitch. Jungle showers. It's raining those big fat jungle raindrops, making the ball slippery and difficult to hold. A minus one modifier pulls, uh, applies to all catch interceptor pickup rolls. Not too bad. And tropical monsoon. Only quick or short passes. And the amount of go for its attempt, amount of go for its attempt a player can make is reduced by one. So if you've got a sprint, you can make two, but otherwise you're just making the one. Last year in kickoff table, don't worry, I'm not going to read through all of this. But there's some cool different um, results there, including a carnosaur invasion, which is quite fun. And then you've got old one stadiums, which is awesome. So you had stadium rules in DZ2, Death Zone 2. Now you've got a whole bunch more, which is very exciting. In fact, it's a D16. Then you've got the tactics, and you've got what a team does, the kind of normal build. Interesting to see they they have fit one chameleon skink in there, so 11 players. On this one here, you've got no, um, no Croxagore. So this team, this build is basically out of the box, but only using one skink, and uh, one chameleon skink and three rerolls. And then you have got the tournament build. This is interesting. So they've recommended a tournament build for 1.1 million. Now, I think all the tournaments we've run that weren't sevens have been 1.1 million. So it does make sense to have that good guide. One Crocs, one, two, three, four, five, six Sauruses, four Skinks, a Chameleon Skink, a Apothecary, Apothecary, and three rerolls. It's actually not a bad build. The only thing you could do is swap out the Chameleon Skink and the Apothecary for two other Skinks. But it really is up to you. The Apothecary might be better, because then you get to keep your source blockers or your Croxicles on there. You've got setups. You've got Drawl and Dribble, who we'll cover on the podcast, and when you'd use them and why. It's quite cool. I'm enjoying seeing these star player sets that are two at a time. It, it creates some cool modeling opportunities. Basically, this guy stabs, this guy stomps. Very interesting. And we do have a bit about why and how the slanalism and team come together. It's nice to see a bit of lore in there. It, it's just great to see the fluff. We have inducements, or at least one inducement. So the slan mage priest. 
We are going to cover this on the podcast, but I'm going to talk about this right now because it's a very interesting wizard. So you've got a wizard for the Lizardman, 150k. Um, he counts as a wizard, etc., etc. Same as the other wizards. But there's two spells. So Tectonic Shift. Uh, start of any of your turns before any player performs an action, or immediately after your turn has ended, even if it ended on turnover. So that's good. So either basically at the beginning of either player's turn. Roll a d6. If the score is three or higher, the floor of the stadium begins to shift. Roll another d6. On a one to two, the pitch tips towards your end zone, and on a three to five, towards your opponents. On a six, you pick any end zone or sideline. Okay, so you've got to cast the spell, and then once you've cast the spell, on a one to two, it goes kind of wrong anyway. However, the cool thing is, all players immediately slide one square in that direction, starting with the player nearest the end zone and ending with the player furthest away. Um, da -da -da -da. If any player leaves the pitch, resolve it as if they've been pushed into the crowd. If the ball carrier scores a touchdown as a result of this, count the touchdown as normal, but only after all players have been moved and any crowd pushes resolved. I love these kind of effects. We had them in Sewer Bowl 7s and we're going to be running one kind of like it in Beachhead in next year. I think it really changes up the game a little bit. And if you can pull this spell off, it could be really, really great. And the second option is Reality Blinks. So again, beginning of any either player's turn essentially. Choose two standing players from your team that do not have the loner skill and are not in possession of the ball. And roll a d6. On a three plus, those two players immediately switch places. If it's a two or lower, the players <laughs> become slightly transparent as they waver between realities. Until the start of your next team turn, these two players lose their tackle zones and gain the no hand skill. So on a three plus, you swap two players that aren't loners so no crocs and no journeyman or star players it, <laughs> and it can't have the ball either so it can be useful to swap a skink with a with a source that you've got leveled up could be interesting it's a really clever way of getting some offense in the backfield as well so if you run a skink over and then if he's still in base contact or near the ball carrier on the next turn on a three plus that skink turns into a source same in defense really cool you've got dirt from the dugout and then we've got some fluff about lustria and a bit of a story for the bad bay hackers so any of you who've read the blood bowl novels these are your guys you get um <laughs> you get a bit more action from them it is a bit of an advert for the book but they are great books one thing that's missing no pete nifton artwork a bit sad but overall very very good so there you have it it's all out you might struggle to get the pitch. Hopefully they've got enough dice. The team and the spike magazine you should be able to get hold of. But it's not the end of the world if you can't get hold of the spike. The rules are out there. You've seen them on the video. Chameleon Skink, Wizard, New Star Players. I'm pretty sure you can get that on Games Workshop's website anyway. But great products. Um, thanks for joining me. See you soon.